And this is his family from, it's a Ipanema plant, it's a family from Morning Glory. And like when they, the junk steams, they can eat it like asparagus. And um, yeah, and this is a, a little bit of the, of the greenhouse inside here. And we can go out a little bit to see a little bit of the, a little more of, this is already part of the zone too. And we can even have a, a line of different mulberries. A little more over there, we have a cardamom. And this one are like little small fruit trees growing here, like pitanga. And this lemon is a calamundi lemon. We even have some Pacific spinach. There is a really delicious spinach. That's a Suriname cherry. And, and, and the ground cover here is a, another a spinach. This is a, the, the, they call a, a Brazilian spinach. And we have New Zealand spinach. And when we start to see go down here, we try to use like every space. We even inside have like Thai, Thailand spinach. And we try to even create a syntropic system when we have different plants to help the plants. Like uh, we, we have nitrogen fixers, like Madero Negro, Glyceria sepium. We have biomass plants, like this one that is a uh, Botón de Oro or fake sunflower. And we have all these medicinal plants and we have flowers. We try to create this system that plants help each other, like it's a syntropic system. Yeah, so we get toucans, two different types of toucans, the aracari and the, the yellow toucan. They love bananas. So if we didn't have the feeders out, they would be harvesting bananas from our banana trees. We're just making it super easy for them so that we enjoy the fruits while they enjoy the fruits, while we're outdoor living and harvesting. Mot we have mot mots. And we and have mot mots and- Over 10 different varieties. Many varieties. 10 around. Food forests bring in so much biodiversity to the lands and to the people, abundance for all of the life that exists here. So a dry garden is a little microclimate. So see the roof that's above us? This is just an extension of our outdoor living and we've created a dry garden. So a little microclimate that is here. And we mix the soil with a little bit more sand so that the soil is more mimicking a desert. We have so much aloe vera that is an um, amazing medicinal plant and we highly recommend whether you have a garden or not, you can put aloe vera on your front porch or have a pot of aloe vera. It's amazing for digestion and detoxification and our stomach lining. It's great for our bodies and our just overall health of our, of our ecosystems. We have the, this is lavender and rue that's here. And, oh, this, this lavender it's too big. is just growing like crazy. This is just a few year old lavender that just keeps on going and producing. And a little chili that's here. A volunteer chili. This is a volunteer, it just popped up and came from- And the from, papayas too, actually. The papayas just came for, to us as volunteers. And we have some cactus that are here. And this is mugwort. It's a medicinal plant for teas. Uh, it induces dreams and has many different beautiful medicinal uses and many more of the same many more aloe vera and rosemary this is our annual garden yeah this part a little the annual garden is a little more down uh, when we talk about regeneration of the land that's a land that the the, the roof was bringing a lot of erosion and washing that's what we do was terraces. We create terraces and we put in, in the edge lemongrass to hold in the terraces. And we bring 
uh, coconut husking, soils from the logs from the from the forest, and now like and the soil here when it was dry they cracked. It was full, and all the soil was this like wash them, and it was orange and clayey. And now like I want to do a. Now we are changing. We have we at some moment we have chiles, corn, beans. Now it's coming the dry season, and we want to change crops. Uh, but you can see like. Now I'm doing a hole and you can see like how the, the soil is changing with all the materials that we bring, like how the coconut huskings and, and different soils from the forest that we bring it is changing it before all the soil was like that. And this is just adding materials and creating terraces is changing totally. And in the roof, we put a gutter to collect into because like if you, the soil, if the water keep like coming here we will lose uh, a lot of uh, soil and wash them because so you can see how it's possible there are some practice regenerative practice like terraces uh, is, is, is based in, in, in that to, to start to and yeah and we always have a lot of birds over there We are part now in the sun tree and we can see like a line of coconuts going into the land and now we want to go to our nursery when we are planting a lot of different fruit trees. Um, and here we have a lot of uh, artocapus, there are shumpadex, shumpajack, our durians. These ones are two durians. Um, here we have strawberries too. They are also growing well. And this is cinnamon tree. That's a cinnamon tree. Um, normally you need to, to like for that you need to like, like they used to scratch the bark. They chop the tree and scratch the bark. And the bark is what we call cinnamon. And behind us is a, a dragon fruit growing over this guava tree. We have a bunch of plantains. You can see that over there. And chaya, there is a Mayan spinach. There are so many curings that we eat a lot because chaya is probably the most like uh, um, nourish and nutritional spinach you can find it. standing underneath a breadfruit tree that is three years old. We think it will fruit in this next season. It was the size, it was shorter than me. It was hip, hip uh, size after just six months. And now three years later, it is a big blossoming breadfruit tree. It's a canopy tree that breadfruit is just amazing, super, food and fruit that is a cannonball size, cantaloupe size ball of pure carbohydrates that is like a potato that grows on a tree. It, could, it is gluten free and can be used in soups. It can be, if you ripen it, it can be like sweet pancakes or sweet bread. And we at Jungle Project mill it into breadfruit flower and the farming communities thrive as breadfruit as the canopy crop and other crops such as cacao and bananas as the companion plants. So breadfruit is just a miracle fruit. It is a food that can be a solution to world hunger, malnutrition. It grows in the tropical nations in the world and helps the environment, the economic prosperity of the farmers, and the lands. So breadfruit, meet breadfruit, such a beautiful, beautiful tree. And there's medicinal properties in the leaves. There's medicinal properties in the bark, in the fruit. And this Articapus family is just incredible.
Uh, just to see like what is a regenerative concept and what is like a diversity uh, system. We can, uh, she's showing us the breadfruit tree. We have lemons. Uh, we have this uh, food tree. Uh, we have this one that is verbena, that is a pollinizer plant. We have all these bananas coming around. We have even this other tree here that is a nitrogen fixer tree. It's called one dual or, or it's called PJ bean. It's an, an a perennial bean. This bean can live for like three years and producing beans. We have granadilla and we have passion fruit in the, in the edge of this border and we have this biomass plant. So as you can see, like, what is diversity? We have cacao in the edges. We have this meringue or trap that is like other artocapus family from, this one is family, delicious fruit is family from jackfruit and breadfruit. So just in this little spa, this little jungle is diversity. It's, it's a really nice example about diversity and abundance. And over there, yeah, we have uh, mango trees, uh, mango stings, uh, tons of different plants. Yeah, so, so maximizing our space through growing upwards, growing ground covers, growing companion plants, growing and mimicking the forest. So we're just looking at nature and mimicking what's already there and creating this living live seed bank where we have enough abundance to share the seeds with yes. our with our bird friends, with our neighbors, with our community. And we are now 50% food sovereign after just three years. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, yeah. Awesome guys, thanks so much for the tour. Uh, this is a little really fun. Uh, you guys have so much densely planted in such a small space and I'm really excited to know that you've got waves of people coming through here, learning what you're doing, taking the, the, the genetic material, these seeds with them to continue propagating around the country. And um, yeah, great work. Congratulations on fulfilling your mission with all of this. And thanks so much for taking the time to have me down for this tour and our interview up at the deck. And um, if anybody else wants to hear more about what these guys are doing with um, Regenerate Your Reality and some of the other projects that are intertwined with that, then definitely check out the video that we just did. And you can find it on YouTube on the full-length interview playlist or you can just go to regenerationnation.cr.com and uh, you'll find the interview there so thanks a lot guys thank you thank you Amazing. and we want to thank you special to Don Trino that is the farmer guy to come to our farm twice or three times a week and he's also making possible to making some of the hard jobs with me this is just always recognize to the people to recognize Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Jason. Thank right. you. Yay. Now for lemonade. Pura vida. Yeah, lemonade.